Hello to you friends. This is the What Buddha Said series. But first, the normal, daily, early Buddhist contemplation. The Buddha's speech on friendliness. What should the clever one advantageously do to attain this state called peace is this. He should be intelligent, straight, honest, humble, gentle, and never proud, contented and easy to support, not busy, careful, and silenced, in abilities and senses, cautious and modest, neither flattering families nor be demanding not doing even a minor trifle that other wise men might criticize. Then he should think, may all beings be joyous and safe, let every creature's mind rejoice, whatever breathing beings there are, no matter whether feeble or firm, will none accept it whether long, tall, big, medium, short or small, whether seen or unseen, visible or not, whether living far away or near here, whether existing or just about to come into being, let every living being's mind be exultantly jubilant. Let no one ever kill or another being undo, nor ever harm anyone anywhere at all. Let no one wish even a minor bad for another, neither from provocation nor from revenge. Thus, as a mother with her own life might guard her only baby child, thus should he maintain a mentality of infinite friendliness for every living being in gentle sympathy for this entire universe, unlimited, endless, and waste. As above, so below, and all around, unimpeded, without any hatred, perched of all enmity, whether standing, walking, seated, or lying down, while slumbering, he should always maintain such awareness of gentle and benevolent kindness. This very mentality is a divine dwelling here, they say. He that do not traffic with many speculative views, perfected in seeing what is right and wrong, purged of lusts for sense pleasures, he will surely not come back here to any womb. And the canonical source for this Buddhist speech on friendliness is the minor readings and the illustrator, the Kutaka Bhatta. Thank you. Hello to you, friends. This is What Buddha Said, number three, with the second sutta of the Ankutara Nikaya, the numerical sayings of the Buddha which is about the mental hindrances, the nivaranas, the cause that make them arise, and the way to overcome them and eradicate them. But first, the normal intro. Namo. Tasso. Bhagavato. Arato. Sama Sambuddhasa Worthy Honorable and perfectly self enlightened was the blessed Buddha indeed. As an introduction to the hindrances, we can say that uh, it is these five mental hindrances that blocks one from enlightenment. 
that blocks one from understanding, that obstructs the process of awakening. So the whole job of Buddhist training is actually to first reduce and then eradicate and eliminate completely, irreversibly, these five mental hindrances. The Anguttara Nikaya is a fairly uh, large text collection. It's this size. It's a book of ones, book on a, a book of, of the book of eleven, eleven chapters, and this is a book of ones, and it's the second sutta, and it's called the hindrances, Nivarana, in Pali. Because I know of no other single state as the attractive feature that even so either makes unarisen sense desire arise or makes already arisen sense desire increase. The attractive feature of or in all things and all phenomena because when given irrational attention induces emergence of unarisen lust and also leads to the increase and development of already arisen lust. Bhikkhus, I perceive no other single phenomenon that even so either makes unarisen ill will arise or induce already arisen ill will to grow as the repulsive feature. The repulsive feature or aspect of or in all things and phenomena because when given irrational attention causes appearance of unarisen aversion and moreover leads to both enlargement and expansion of already present aversion. Because I comprehend no other single state that even so either makes unarisen liturgy and laziness manifest or deepens and solidifies already present liturgy and laziness as unnoticed boredom, laid back laxity, after meal drowsiness and mental sluggishness. The apathy of this immobile sluggishness because makes Latin liturgy and laziness come into being and it also induces worsening and widening of previously arisen liturgy and laziness. Because I see no other characteristic that even so makes unarisen restlessness and regret arise or excretes already present restlessness and regret as unnoticed mental unrest, stress, the worried, agitated and troubled mind because stimulates the onset of unarisen restlessness and regret and generates intensification and expansion of earlier emerged restlessness and regret. Because I know of no other single mental state that even so makes unarisen doubt and uncertainty arise, or makes already apparent doubt and uncertainty even more confusing as irrational attention, ayuniso manusikala. Irrational attention because kindles arrival of unarisen doubt and uncertainty, and creates also amplification and complication of earlier arisen doubt and uncertainty. This was the five hindrances, how they arise. So the Buddha now speaks about how to remove these mental hindrances. Because 
I know of no other single thing that even so either prevents their rising of unarising sense desire or makes already arising sense desire pass away as a disgusting sign. The disgusting sign are super nimitta because when given rational attention prevents arising of unarising lust and it also eliminates already arising lust. Because I perceive no other single state that even so either averts the appearance of unarising ill will or makes already appeared aggression evaporate as universal infinite friendliness. The mental release by friendliness because when given rational attention prevents appearance of unarising hostility and it also makes already a roost enmity fade away. Because I know of no other single aspect that even so either ward off the advent of unarising liturgy and laziness or make already arisen liturgy and laziness vanish as the elements of initiative, the elements of launching and the element of endurance. Such energetic initiation by these three elements because prevents the development of unarising liturgy and laziness. And it also wipes out already present liturgy and laziness. Because I see not even one other single mental state that even so either fend off the dawn of unarising restlessness and regret, or silences already stirred up restlessness and regret as mental tranquility. The calm mind, because stall the stirring up of unarising restlessness and regret, and it also quench already agitated restlessness and regret. Bikus, I know of no other single thing that even so either prevents arising of unarising doubt and uncertainty, or removes already arising doubt and uncertainty as rational attention. Attention directed rationally, Bikus, halts the emergence of unarising, doubt and uncertainty, and it also eradicates already present doubt and uncertainty. Thus was the Buddha's words on the five mental hindrances, the Nivaranas, the arising and the removal. There are some comments. Uh, the five mental hindrances obstructs the mind, so it, it blocks whatever mental abilities one have, and it blocks vision, mental vision, the vision to understand, the ability to understand. So collectively they cause ignorance to arise and dominate the mind, and they are as follows. One, sense desire, karma chanda. Two, Ill will viabada. Three, lethargy and laziness. Tina midda. Four, restlessness and regret. Udacha kukucha. Five, doubt and uncertainty. Vichikitja. So, since desire is likened, the Buddha likened some, made some similes about uh, these five mental hindrances. And they goes as follows. Since desire is likened to water mixed with colors with paint, various colors, many kinds of colors. So if one has this in a bucket, then one cannot, and do looks down in the bucket, one cannot recognize one's own face reflected in such polluted water. Similar, one cannot recognize reality as it really is under influence of sense desire, since one only notices the attractive aspects 
of things. And one completely overlooks and neglect the disliked, repulsive aspects. And this entails that any realistic representation and evaluation of the object is thereby blocked. This is the one side. The opposite side is ill will and aversion. This is like to boiling water. One cannot recognize one's own face reflected in such boiling water. Similarly, one cannot recognize reality as it really is under influence of ill will. Since one only notice and pay attention to the disliked, repulsive aspects, and one overlooks, neglects the attractive, the likable, good qualities of the same object or person. So any objective representation or assessment is thereby again hindered, in this case by repulsion, aversion towards the object. Lethargy and laziness is likened to water covered with moss. One cannot recognize one's own face in such covered water, and similarly one cannot recognize reality as it really is under influence of lethargy and laziness, since one does not have enough energy to search, examine and scrutinize this subtle reality. So, uh, only the superficial aspects of any object or aspect is thereby seen. And such superficial uh, aspects are thereby mistaken as being the essence of the matter. So it's a, one doesn't drill and penetrate into the object because one doesn't have time or energy to do it because of this laziness. So one just surfs on the surface, skin deep. Not more than that. Restlessness and regret is likened to rippled water, undulated by the wind. One cannot recognize one's own face reflected in such stirred surface. Similarly one, similarly, one cannot recognize reality as it really is under influence of restlessness and regret, as one lacks the calm required for prolonged observation. One is simply too stressed, uh, too busy, uh, so one cannot look at the object. So this is this attention deficit is very common among uh, modern people because they are bombarded with information and advertisement. So you have to skip over and accept to the next channel and the next object, the next object. So people are sapping all the time. And this means that people cannot read books anymore. They can read five lines of text. And in, on, on YouTube videos, uh, the average uh, view time is seven minutes and 30 seconds. So that they cannot see a film in one hour unless there is boom, bang, very, very uh, entertaining. This is a lot of uh, present day culture. Five lines of text, seven minutes of video, uh, then boom. Attention is cut and go to another object. Well, uh, then it's only, <laughs> yeah, you cannot reach enlightenment with that uh, attention deficit. That's for sure. One has to dig deeper than that. Doubt and uncertainty is likened to cloudy and muddy water. One cannot recognize one's own surface reflected in such unclear water. Similarly, one cannot recognize reality as it really is under the influence of doubt and uncertainty, as one is unable to correctly evaluate even obvious observations. Mind cannot thus settle down on any certainty and remains perplexed by confusion. So this muddy water, even though there's, if you, for example, dive in muddy water, even though there's something right in front of you, you cannot see it, because the water is muddy, there's no visibility. And so is this doubt and uncertainty. There's no visibility of the mind to see, to understand, to visualize, to imagine how the object really is, how the reality really is. Just as in such water one cannot perceive one's own reflection, so in the presence of these five mental hindrances, 
one cannot clearly discern, experience, nor realize one's own benefit or advantage, nor the benefit advantage of others, nor that benefit or what is beneficial or what is advantageous for both oneself and for others. It's impossible. It's impossible. So basically, under influence of these five mental hindrances, one cannot discriminate what is good and what is bad, both for oneself and for others. This is to, uh, to be seen in the world uh, every day, every day, every day. When you look through these glasses of these five, men, five mental hindrances, then you see the effects all over the place. So, yes, they say I as political parties or beings or persons or leaders or whatever that do this and that in the world, both good and bad. But no, this is, uh, this my five mental hindrances all lack thereof that are effective in this world. And not much else, actually. Since this eye can also be likened to adept, since one in the presence of the liked object cannot stand straight, just as a man in the presence of those he owes money to will look down and feel at unease. Ill will, aversion, and aversion is also likened to a gallbladder disease or gallstone disease where one feels pain if one eats something sweet or something oily. Since one feels pain and cannot dis digest sweet things, just as the aggressive one cannot cope with even the light, with even the attractive, without stirring up aversion and discontent. So, so this uh, this hater uh, or person who is irritated, even though uh, the world smiles to him or her, then because of this aversion and ill will is inside the mind and dominates the mind, then they react aversively even to the sweet things, even to the sweet aspects of the world. Restlessness and regret is also likened to a state of slavery, since one is as if enslaved by one's own mental defilement. And the restlessness and regret, one has to do something I have to do something new. I have to see something new. I have to do. I have to earn some more money. I have to get a new partner, a new job, or a new, 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 new film, or a new, 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 new. Yes. So this slavery goes on. One cannot find inner calm. One cannot find peace. Because one cannot find peace, one cannot find happiness. So one keeps searching even faster out in this world for superficial satisfaction of sense desire, usually. So, indeed, restlessness is a slavery. Indeed, it is a slavery. Doubt and uncertainty is also likened to a desert, since one in doubt has to cross a veritable desert of wrong views before he or she arrives at certainty, at direct experience and assured knowledge. So this desert of, of wrong views, it can take many lives, many universal cycles to cross. So it is a very, very, very large and very barren, very dry, fruitless desert of wrong views, where one doesn't know how it really is, cannot discriminate reality from assumption. The attractive aspects are all the details one likes with the various diversity of compounded phenomena. For example, the smile of a beautiful woman, the taste of the nice food, the value of the tempting money. The repulsive aspects are the de details one dislikes with the same compounded phenomena. For example, the inner organs or excrement of the beautiful woman. The vomit the food turns into right after it's swallowed. And the slave job and taxes one has to tolerate when earning money. 
Increase and development means both increase in magnitude and intensification of the property or quality. Irrational attention means not paying attention to the cause or reason behind phenomena, like asking, when what cause is present, do this effect arise? When what cause is absent, does this effect cease? The disgusting sign, Asupanimitta, means a memorized mental image of usually a rotten human corpse, which, when given attention, induces revulsion and thereby instant disappearance and evaporation of any lusty sense desire. Any disliked aspect can be used, but it should be truly repulsive and well remembered, protected and kept in mind to be effective in suppression of this otherwise uncontrollable fever of greed. Protect this sign of disgust as your own eyes, or as a precious, precious treasure, this ancient elders say. Protect the sign, protect the sign. So the technique is, first one remembers a very disgusting thing, for example, a rotting corpse, a particular view of this rotting corpse, a particular image, one can have an image in one's purse. And then whenever uh, such, such desire for food, for eating, for overeating, for example, unnecessary eating, or for porn, or for money, or for entertainment, or for music, or for whatever sense desire that arises, then one remembers, turns attention rationally to this disgusting sign, this asupanimita, and pluff, off goes the lust, off goes the greed. So when one has gained an off button, one can turn off this television of greed by this disgusting sign. Otherwise, there is only an on button. So when the desire arises, it has to be satisfied. Thereby, one becomes addicted to this, whatever object makes this desire arise. Protect the sign. Protect the sign. This means keeping the sign of disgust in, in mind all the time. Mental release by friendliness, metta chitta vimutti, means the open and joyous ease of peace experienced during repeated cultivation of universal and infinite friendliness, universal and infinite sympathy, universal and infinite joy, rejoicing joy, and universal and infinite equanimity. These quite pleasant and positive mental attitudes instantly abolish all even deeply ingrown grudge and violent aggression. So it is the four infinite states, the four Brahma Viharas, the four divine dwellings. Infinite friendliness, infinite rejoicing joy, infinite compassion and infinite equanimity. This makes any aversion, any irritation, any grudge, any aggression, any opposition, any stubbornness, any mental rigidity evaporate right on the spot when mind is turned to them because there's a mental release by friendliness. Metta citta vimutti. The element of initiative, the element of launching, and the element of endurance. The element of initiative means a purely mental decision taken to act. So one lies on the bed, one, okay, say, now I have to go out and do the dishes. One takes a decision, okay, now I'll do it. But one is not moving yet. Then one swings the bed out the sofa. This is the element of launching. When one is then dishing, and when one decides to finish the dish, or the job, or the task, whatever it is, then this is the element of endurance. So, launching into effort is when the body now also is starting up, and getting up from the sofa and get going, while the element of endurance is the ability to maintain and sustain 
the exerted effort until the task is completely finished. Mental stamina, determination, patience, tolerance, and energetic, enthusiastic exertion are helpful associated states to be cultivated and perfected. Tranquility passati consists of a dual calm of both bodily tranquility, kaya passati, and mental tranquility, citta passati. Both can be quite well developed during sitting meditation. They depend on each other and preclude the deeper levels of absorbed concentration, samadhi, jhana, tranquility. Take home here is bodily tranquility, that the body is calm, and mental tranquility, that the mind is calm. Rational attention, yoniso manasikra, means paying attention to the cause and reason behind phenomena, like asking, when what cause is present, does this effect arise? When what cause is absent or vanishing, does this effect not arise? or sees. This covers the land, I think, uh, fairly well on the mental hindrances in the second sutta of the numerical sayings of the Buddha, the Ankutara Nikaya, which you see here. Lastly, is only to say thank you to all the supporters and donors, and thank you for your attention, participation, and contribution. May you have a nice day. Namo Tasso Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Worthy Anabo and perfectly, perfectly self-enlightened was the blessed Buddha. Thank you. You heard Bhikkhu Samaita from the Cypress Hermitage on the Knuckles Mountain, Pamparella, Central Hill Country, Sri Lanka. Please subscribe to the Google group Buddha Direct and visit the website whatbuddhasit.net May all beings become thus happy thereby. Thank you. Namo Tasso Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Worthy, honorable, and perfectly self enlightened was the blessed Buddha. As the next Buddha, the noble Arya Ajitta Mateya, will say, You can come as you like, but you pay as you go. Thank you for your contribution and help. A nice day.